I want to try to talk about a topic that really isn't that simple and I want to make it a little more challenging by trying to use tree sheets as a presentation software. So if you're not particularly interested in overpaying income taxes to get paper savings bonds returned to you and how you can screw it up if you are impatient in using Linux and using Windows and a virtual machine and you know doing all kinds of overcomplicated things to try to save money and try to be stubborn and use Linux if that topic doesn't interest you you can just watch a little bit of this and see what tree sheets looks like as a as a presentation tool but I haven't used tree sheets very long I've, I used it I just learned it a little while ago I think it's kind of exciting so let me try to I mean basically you're just zooming in and out all the time so like this little blurb here we're trying to talk about tree sheets very briefly so you zoom in on it and you have these links here that'll bring up uh, they're a link to a JPEG on the hard drive you hit a, a hotkey and it'll come up so in this case I'm saying this is I think this is the tree sheets website so screenshot of the tree sheets website this software to me is pretty exciting but it took me a while to, to make this strange presentation in it but it's fun and it's a little rough around the edges you know when you resize text you hold shift and use the scroll wheel and things kind of are strange I'm not that intelligent to identify exactly what's going on but normally I would think if I was resizing just this piece these other things shouldn't change size but it seems like everything is changing size and it's very disconcerting so making this presentation took way longer than I think it ought to but I still am enthusiastic about the software because <laughs> it's very easy to make colorful you know pastel colored things and I like that for whatever weird reason but what I'm trying to talk about is an attempt to get I bonds. What is this? So again, trying to zoom in in tree sheets to focus on this. I'm not that used to doing this. I, I just kind of felt disconcerted, but whatever. I was working from this personal finance blog which I think is tremendously useful and tremendously clearly written succinct it's everything that this YouTube video is not I can only dream of communicating with, with the kind of clarity that this guy has but I mean he he lays out how you overpay on your income taxes and you get as much as five thousand dollars in I bonds back and it really isn't that easy you have to read this very carefully and follow it very closely and then there's many reader comments getting into very fine points of this technique and apparently it's kind of easy to mess it up but I bet I messed it up in a unusual and unique way <laughs> because I'm trying to use Linux and a virtual machine and all kinds of nonsense but otherwise he has a series about I bonds lots of articles really helpful the one in particular I don't know if I can see it in all this right away maybe I'm not hold on a second yeah this one his soup to nuts article I think is the place to start and I read a lot of this and I felt confident to try to do this I've, I'm trying to boil it down to something really simple 
and sketch it out, you know, you're just sending in an overpayment to the IRS. If you do it correctly, eventually they will mail you paper savings bonds and you are allowed $5,000 limit on this in one year. But this is going to make doing your tax return a little more complicated. And try to just boil it down to very simple steps. You, you, uh, you use IRS direct pay to send the money to the IRS and at the same time I guess you're requesting an extension to file but you don't have to actually wait to file this is just a method to send this money to the IRS you're sending a payment and your reason is you're doing an extension you have to kind of remember this 4868 because it'll come up later as you're trying to work on this and otherwise when you're doing the taxes you have to fill out the return and attach a form 8888 where you say I overpaid I want it back in the form of savings bonds I found this kind of confusing to, to understand exactly how to fill this out and you know as usual it's a form with instructions and I looked at the instructions and I got a little confused and I just thought I could understand how to do it I think I I think I overpaid by you know an amount plus fifteen dollars in order to get fifteen dollars back separately which is a signal to me that it worked and then I said well I guess according to the instructions that extra fifteen dollars should be in this here this paper check and that was my understanding of the instructions which may or may not be correct like normally you'd say I don't want a paper check I want the money back by direct deposit but when I read the instructions it wasn't very clear to me that that would work to get these get this technique to work it seemed more correct to me to say give me the paper check but I don't know what works because I bombed the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, zooming in and out in tree sheets, I, I'm getting disconcerted by, but it's pretty cool because you're seeing your whole talk, right? So, you know, for you watching this YouTube video, you can look at this as, as an overall outline and do I want to keep watching this or shut it down? I mean, you're going to hear, you just heard about what is overpaying taxes to get the I bonds and the basic steps and then next is why would you do such a thing what's the benefit of it and then the rest of it is how did I mess up you know and what's I messed up so what now what I guess I don't get the I bonds obviously and then I'm gonna go into a lot of details exactly how I messed up which may or may not be of interest to you and you can see that you know quit the video at that point and the the I guess the takeaway was you can hear this story and identify the mistakes and then you can try to avoid those mistakes and not miss out on the I bonds but as I think I've said or hinted at already I'm kind of a weird use case because I'm using Linux and some offbeat kind of things but maybe that's you too so maybe you want to stick with this so I'll dive into the rest of this basically like the big news in personal finance is is uh, inflation has picked up quite a bit you know the the change in the consumer price index year after year or whatever is at a, a many decade high and but these Series I savings bonds are going to return at least the rate of inflation. And I'm not going to talk about all the details of them. Uh, that blogger Harry Sitt does a much better job than I ever could. But 
you know, at least for the next six months, if you got this return in quickly, and you made this request for I bonds quickly enough, for the next six months, you would get a 7% annual interest rate. And then, you know, I think in another six months, you get whatever the current inflation rate is. And there's more details there. I probably screwed that up. But that's just like a rough sketch of what's going on. And, you know, overall, in a, in a year, there are limits to how many I-bonds you can buy. And Harry Set covers all these angles on how you would get I-bonds various ways. And, you know, these careful efforts to find all these ways to get I-bonds have really intensified with this 7% current level of inflation and you know the inflation protective savings bonds matching that at present lighting a fire under people to figure out all the different ways they can get series i savings bonds so just this overpayment of your income taxes and requesting it back in savings bonds allows you to get up to five thousand dollars of i bonds with your tax return by sending in $5,000 ahead of time. And otherwise, I mean, you can kind of speculate overall for the, the coming year, what overall average interest rate will you get out of the I-bonds? And let's say it's 6%, like 7% the first six months, maybe 5% the second six months, so it comes out to 6% averaged. And if you take 6% of the $5,000, that would give you three thousand dollars for the year so the way I'm looking at this is wow if I do this correctly and I had five thousand dollars to overpay I could get three hundred dollars in interest for the year on five thousand dollars which is pretty good for the current interest rate environment how did I screw it up why am I why did I blow it and why am I not gonna get the I bonds. It was in the way I filed the tax return. You know, the, the big idea was to do your taxes correctly. And when you make a mistake, the IRS will not send you I bonds. They will just return the overpayment in a paper check after a while. So you will be disappointed. And that's the boat that I'm floating around in. So, I mean, I picked this method of e-filing with IRS free fillable forms. And I had never used this before. But at the same time, when I do my taxes, I'm usually in kind of a hurry. I want to get it done because I don't like it. And just the idea of getting extra money in I-bonds, for some reason, just made me more impatient wanting to get this done done. I mean, it's like in that old movie used cars where the car salesman has a fishing pole and he's casting a hook with some 20s on the hook and making people scramble after it in the used car lot. I mean, I, I'm kind of picturing that. That is me. They've, they've uh, cast some money in front of me and I'm scrambling after it. And it made me be less careful and just impatient, overconfident, wanting to get the e-filing over with as fast as possible. And then I screwed up free fillable forms because that software isn't very easy to use, which is where, what I get into in the rest of the talk. And what, what happens if you mess it up? You just get the money you overpaid back as a paper check by snail mail, U.S. Postal Mail. And you don't get any I-bonds, and, you know, if you had overpaid by $5,000, you could have got $300 in, a, in income for the year, roughly, but instead you'll get $0, and you'll be sad. Now this, this tree sheets gets a little overcomplicated I guess here I was packing a lot of stuff in here and now I'm kind of trying to zoom way in and I'm gonna get really disoriented 
Uh, like I, I start out, like I already was trying to describe my attitude and approach, not very good, not what you need to, not the recipe for success in this. But I mean, my big task was figuring out how to how to prepare the turn and return and e-file it. That was the hardest part. I mean, the blogger Harry set I think was very good at everything. And he gave some options, but I didn't like his options. And then, I, you know, people in the comment section were talking about other things and just kind of hinting that they could be good. And I, I zeroed in on this IRS free fillable forms and I gave that a try and screwed it up. And, you know, here I'm, I'm talking about how did I pick IRS free fillable forms? And here... I'm going to talk about how did I screw up IRS free fillable forms? What went wrong? So that's, you know, that's the rest of what's going to go on in this video. I mean, I don't know. I'm being kind of humorous here. How how did I fall into the hole here? I'm cheap. I can't say no to software that doesn't cost money. I mean, as a Linux user, I'm really supposed to be passionate about software with an open license. But, yeah, I'm cheap. I, I want some software that doesn't cost money. Even if, like, the good software costs $40 or $60, I still will... You know, if you're... if, if With this thing, if at most you're going to get $300 in an entire year... If you spend sixty dollars on the software to do the return, that's not insignificant. And if you can master the free software, free as in beer software, and you keep doing this over a number of years, it the money you save will add up. But then the impatience, the overconfidence, that's really what killed me here. And then I never use Windows. I I haven't had a need to. I haven't ran Windows in about three years. When I do run Windows, I put it into a virtual box, virtual machine. I'm very rusty on those, all that stuff. But I also was overconfident and impatient, and I I was like, oh, I know how to use virtual box. It's not that hard. In my memory, it wasn't. I'm like, I should be able to do that pretty quickly. What's the problem? But it didn't work out that way. So, I mean, most of this tax software is Windows and Mac operating system only. And Harry Set was advising you to use software that you download and install in Windows or Mac and not web-based I think his reasoning that I could understand was this is due to the downloaded software being more full featured and more capable. So he's got an article where he tells you to buy the downloaded software and not the online service. And there are 49 fairly complicated comments from readers and this goes on and on and I found this to be the hardest part of this project is to say wait a minute how do I file the taxes and you know eventually I I come to believe that I have to use Windows I have to use VirtualBox unless I want to just install Windows on a PC and wipe out what that PC has on it. And I'm really rusty on VirtualBox and that made me screw up. And then, you know, just this, this task of trying to figure out what what is the way, what is the software, how do you file the taxes and not, not make a mistake and just get your money back instead of the I-bonds. Like it may have been good to email someone, ask for help on a forum, 
use a telephone and call up and maybe ask somebody but that's not me I just like to use the Google search box and spend hours trying to figure things out and I just I think it's my personality I just don't want to improve beyond that but I know it's not good but I'm kinda of stuck there what yeah I mean I'm old enough that I used to make out the paper returns and mail them in so this is not new to me but in more recent years I would have been using the so-called IRS free file interview style web-based solutions you know this year in the state that I'm in these are the choices but I don't know if these have the features that you need to do this I bond process and if I had the patience I maybe would try to reach out to these providers by email or telephone or contact form on a website I'm not on Facebook so I'm not gonna talk to them on social media I just didn't have the patience for that but and then you have to get the right person that knows oh you want to use form 8888 and you want to request you know that the overpayment come back to you in paper I bonds not electronic I bonds paper I bonds I don't know I don't know how well that would work out to try to be sure that one of these will work I mean nobody in what I saw on the internet was using these to do this and I don't know if that is because everybody that has some money to get savings bonds is also too high income to qualify for this or if their time is too valuable that they you know they just rather get quality you know higher priced software solutions I don't know I just know I couldn't you know with with some desperate googling I could not figure out I couldn't convince myself that these free file solutions would do this I bond task why can't you just file a paper return Harry set says it's gonna be too slow you're not gonna get that seven percent rate for the next six months don't file paper you have to e-file and I yeah I was talking about this here I gotta be convinced that the free file would satisfy the requirements of this project so in one of Harry Sitt's articles he identifies some some uh, downloadable software that will run in Windows and it's sold as a download on Amazon but oh, I don't remember exactly what frightened me about this but I think I looked at Amazon reviews or something and I just wasn't sure that if I'm using Windows and VirtualBox on Linux is this really gonna work but I mean you know from Harry Sitt that you know Amazon downloads of TurboTax Deluxe or H&R Block Deluxe will do this task but he says oh I just have another PC around available that's fully updated and it's running Windows and I have no problem with this and I have no problem with the cost of one of these as an Amazon download and for me I was kinda stuck cuz I'm offbeat. I'm I'm using Linux, VirtualBox, a virtual machine. I'm just afraid something's going to go wrong and I'm not going to get my return will be defective somehow and I won't get those I bonds. So I I was like people are talking about this IRS free fillable forms. Why can't I just use that? People are saying I succeeded with it, but they are not 
necessarily Linux users in a, in a VM. So I just, I guess I have a, a screenshot of the website for IRS free global forms. And it is a web-based piece of software where you are filling in tax forms on your computer screen. And it's web-based. So initially, I assumed it's going to work in Linux. Every other thing, online banking, you know, online... Uh, investing platforms, lots of things work fine in Linux, so why can't you would assume uh, IRS free fillable forms, you would assume that it works with no problem. And I saw that some people on the internet forums, maybe on Reddit, were saying it'll work. But to me that was very anecdotal and I wasn't convinced. I, I didn't want to risk the I bonds on, you know, some people get it to work, but what are they using it for? And is their Linux distribution with all the installed software on their machine quite the same as what I have running? I don't know. I mean, this is what the web page looks like. And you, I don't know, I mean, it looked good to me. I, I, I wasn't deterred by anything. I said, this is what I want to do. I didn't have any reason to hesitate. I grew up in the 1980s. I've used a lot of, you know, less user-friendly software particularly way back when, so why not? I think I could, you know, give it a try. It didn't seem like a bad idea. I, I just thought that was the right way to go. For some people, it probably would be. For me, it turned out not to be. And then this is the story of how I messed it up with the free fillable forms. It was game over for I-bonds for me. I'll just get the money back as a paper check. So, I mean, I didn't like the user manual. I couldn't make much sense out of it. But on the free fillable, for free fillable forms website and in the user manual, it says many times... Windows and Mac only, or maybe Windows, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. There's no, it says, no Linux, basically. I want to get the I-bonds. I don't want to take a chance. So I said, oh, once I started to look at free fillable forms, I said, yeah, I'm going to have to use Windows in the virtual machine. But then it should really work. I mean, it, to me, it was it's a web-based piece of software. And I kind of expect it to work in Linux anyway. And then I was thinking, if you're going to use it in the Windows Virtual Machine, doesn't that mean it'll be even more likely to work and be even more reliable? I don't know. That's my logic. Maybe wrong, but that's what I was thinking. Well, let me take a, a closer look at this. What does this manual look like? The first thing I was complaining about was there are a lot of photos in here of just grinning people, smiling people, people that are delighted, I guess, with this product. They are, they are feeling it. They are liking free fillable forms. To me, all these pictures are very distracting. I mean, most of these pages, the picture is half the page. And this, I don't know what it is with my brain, but these pictures distract me and they make me feel like I'm wasting my time looking at these instructions. But 
that's not the way it is. You do have to really read this. You have to read every word of this more or less. Is this is this manual formatted to make the key information jump out at you? I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like if you can control your mind and not get distracted by this guy staring into your eyes uh, with with pleasure at free fillable forms, if you can get past that, then I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'm not seeing like the main points here boiled down and hitting you in the face and I feel like I'm looking at like a reference manual for software in 1995 or something like Hewlett Packard's version of LabVIEW in 1995 or something your reference manual and that's I have no patience so I should have quit here I should have quit but I was rolling. I couldn't stop. And I, I said, I've used, I've used the software that isn't so user-friendly. And I'm going to make it. And I want to do it. I want to do it now. I'm going to dive into this because I want that three, I want, you know, at most $300 in interest. The money is dangling in front of me on a fishing line and making me scramble after it. Yeah, long and boring. What is the point? What, give me the point. And there's pictures of all these people, but wh where is the pictures of the soft, the software workflows? Like a flowchart or something. You know, give me a picture of what I'm doing. And tell me what the, what the traps are, where I'm going to make mistakes. Do it graphically so I, I can really feel it. It's just a lot of dry text, like if it, like it was a reference manual. Oh my goodness. I, I should have quit. I kept going because I want the money. And But the thing is, once I get frustrated, I just learn software by trial and error. I, I run out of patience, and I've, I'm going to just trial and error it, but that's not going to work for this. You, you uh, have to get it right, or else you're not going to get the eye bonds and then you know just I just I just had more problems and just lost more patience my patience is wearing thin you know I looked I looked at the manual for free fillable forums and I said okay let's set up the Windows VM but this took hours because of Windows updates the Windows updates were going on and on. They seemed like they were hanging. So I start Googling, why are they hanging? And I don't get a clear reason for why it seems to hang at 100% downloaded and it just freezes. And it's telling you, oh, restart the machine. So I'm restarting it. But I notice that it's the same update over and over. So that can't be right. So then I leave it for a long time. And it eventually did go and finally finish and now I'm really impatient now I'm really frustrated now it's getting kinda late and I'm like I just want to get this over with and I feel determined and I'm playing you know some classical music that has a upbeat tempo I'm like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it but in reality I'm impatient and I'm headed for failure <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't really remember that you would really do have to do these additional steps of setting up a, a virtual machine. you got to set up the shared folder, the guest editions. And, you know, out of the box, this Windows virtual machine had a screen that was small compared to my monitor. And then I was only able to see a fraction of a, of a web page or a PDF. So free fillable forms has you're basically looking at a tax form and filling in the boxes and if you can only see a fraction of that tax form that's gonna make it harder but my tax form is pretty simple so I, I really felt I can I can get away with this 
I mean, I tried to make it easier. I found a very cool software in Linux, maybe maybe multi-platform, I can't remember, OpenTax Solver. I thought this was great. I mean, this this is a software that is free and open source and is running on the desktop and you are able to do your taxes ahead of time in this. This is not capable of e-filing your taxes. You're just, I mean, the output of this is PDF tax forms that are filled in. It does the calculations. So by doing this ahead of time, you really are all set to tackle the IRS free fillable forms. And then form 8888 is how you request that the overpayment come back to you in paper I bonds. And I had filled that out on paper and read the instructions and filled it out carefully. So I really felt like I was ready. But, you know, free fillable forms, I still bombed. So I guess this is the conclusion of, of uh, the story of bombing out. In the end, with free fillable forms, you're supposed to inspect your PDF tax return and you're supposed to see if anything's missing. And I was missing form 8888, the request for the I bonds, but I didn't recognize that. And then this is really, this is the like the details of, you know, a lot of excuses for why I did that. <laughs> But that's essentially what happened. I mean, I at at you know a point with free fillable forms, I'm supposed to inspect the PDF that I have generated, and I I didn't see it's missing the form. I mean, really, because I couldn't tolerate reading that instruction manual, I didn't realize that with free fillable forms, the only thing that matters is the PDF return that you generate. I mean, as you're using the software, you're filling in forms on the screen and you get a collection of forms. And I was concentrating on that workspace and I was taking all kinds of screenshots of the, the forms that I made there and they were all there and they're all complete. But that that's meaningless. The only thing that's going to be filed is the PDF that is generated. So why are they different? Why are, Why is the workspace forms different than the PDF that's generated. Well, that's, um, I guess I'm going to try to explain that without actually bringing up free fillable forms because the account that I was using is clo kind of closed out for the tax year. I mean, you can just go on there and see the status of your return or something. I mean, for me to get free fillable forms up and running here, I think I would have to use a different email and a different phone number. And I don't know if I have to make up a name or something to get back into it. I don't want to do that. I'll just, you know, wave my hands and try to talk about this. And I took some screenshots out of the user manual. I mean, this is what, this is almost like a good representation of what I saw in the VM. I mean, I had a VM with a small screen, basically, because I didn't customize the VM or, or finish creating it properly. So I'm kind of looking through a, a small window at, you know, this is what, what, I was, what I'm calling the workspace. In the workspace, I'm looking at tax forms. I mean, you can add more forms. But, I mean, you start with your 1040 and you're filling it out. But as you as you add numbers and boxes, you have to realize to click the button, do the math. But as far as I remember, you can put numbers in and change the numbers. The calculated fields don't change. They don't update. It isn't Microsoft Excel. It's free fillable forms. They require you to hit the button, do the math. But I do not as far as I remember, the button, there's no nothing on the screen that alerts you or signals you to say, 
you changed an input. You better click do the math. As far as I know, that, that nothing changes on the screen. There's no signal. I can change my wages or my interest income or something. You don't get like a change here. This doesn't change colors or something to tell you. You better click that. And here's the big one, the done with this form. I think as far as I remember and observed when I was using this, nothing nothing uh, alerts you that you haven't clicked done with this form. I mean, there's another little screen here that I'll get to where you see your collection of forms. I mean, you added your forms. I'll have a 1040, I'll have a 8888, and a little list. When any or all of those forms have not been completed by clicking done, as far as I remember and observe, there's nothing on the screen anywhere that alerts you and says, hey, you've got forms in your little collection here. You didn't finish them with this button. When you don't click this button to finish them, they don't end up in your PDF return at the end, and the PDF return is what gets e-filed. This stuff here does not get e-filed. All this stuff is, the only, the only effect this has is you, if you clicked done with the form, and then you click at the end, print the return, the PDF return is going to take all the completed forms and assemble them. And the ones that aren't complete, they don't get in there. So, I mean, my big mistake was I had the form 8888 and I had filled it out completely and I had taken a bunch of screenshots of the workspace but not the final product and I forgot to click done with the form. And my excuse is nothing, there's nothing here that signals you even when you're moving to e-file, nothing pops up and says, hey, you've got forms in your workspace that have not been completed by clicking done with the form. Are you sure you want to e-file? The software doesn't do that. I mean, that's my complaint. I think this other one is just a screenshot of, you know, in your workspace, you have your list of your forms. So I had a 1040, I had some other things, I had the form 8888, and nothing, there's no signal that, that I understood, that I observed, that I was aware of. There's no signal, visual signal or whatever, that says, hey, you didn't finish this one. Are you sure you want to Number one, are you sure you want to generate the, the PDF return? And number two, are you sure you want to uh, e-file that PDF return when you have, you know, forms in your workspace that are not complete? Now I kind of lost my place in here. Where am I? <laughs> Zooming in and out. I guess I was in here. Zooming in and out here gets disconcerting to me. I mean, you're holding down the control key and, and spinning the mouse wheel one way or another, and I kind of forget which way I'm going with the mouse wheel. So, I mean, you generate the PDF return, and you're supposed to inspect it. And I had this small virtual machine screen and I wasn't getting a real good look at the PDF return. And I also just didn't realize that, you know, the the workspace forms are meaningless. It's the this PDF is what you need. And I needed to set up the shared folder in the virtual machine. Get that PDF return out of this virtual machine into the host operating system where I can get a look at it and you know, really, I should have just left the whole thing to another day or two days later. It wouldn't have made a difference. I probably could have caught the mistake. 
but I don't like doing taxes. I'm in a big hurry. And for some reason, with my psychology, the, the idea that I could get interest income out of I-bonds just made me less patient and made me want to get this done faster. But then another weird psychological thing happened. I e-filed in a hurry with this incomplete return, and then all of a sudden my brain cleared up, and I just magically realized all the mistakes that I made. So bizarre. What what in human psychology explains that? And then I sat there and I finished setting up the virtual machine with the shared folders and guest editions. I got the the completed tax return out for, via the shared folder into the host operating system. And immediately, yeah, I had suspected I was missing the form that requests the I-bonds. And somehow that was in my mind, but it didn't stop me from e-filing. But right after e-filing, somehow my brain clears up and says, let me, let me see that, that PDF return. Let me see that. And then I also somehow in my mind, I was like, yeah, I bet it's going to be the case that that is what gets filed. It's not, it's not the f forms in the workspace. It's the PDF. Sometimes I think with, with free file or something, I think I had the impression that what you're putting in the boxes in the in the interview style software is what is going to be filed. And when I did free file in the past, I think I was very casual and cavalier with the PDF that gets generated at, at the end. I kind of felt like, no, I took screenshots all along the way of everything I did in the workspace. And that that's it. That's my data entry. That's what I'm filing, but uh, maybe also with free file. If I bothered to look at the instructions there, that may also say, you better take a hard look at that PDF and make sure that is what is your intention to file, because that is what is going to the IRS. It's not, it's not those many screens of interview style screens where you filled in all your data. It's the PDF in the end, and you better really inspect that. But when I did free file in the past, I think I kind of blew past the the PDF return I've, and just said, yeah, I know I did this right. I took screenshots. It all looks it all looks right at every step. E-file now. And yeah, magically after I screwed it up, like 20 minutes later, there I'm sitting on my behind looking word for word at this free fillable forms user's manual and all of a sudden I have all the patience in the world to read it and and like my mind clears up and suddenly I'm like yes it is true you have to get the PDF return correct the workspace doesn't matter you know and it, this just reminds me of like being a kid and being in school and I got a crappy grade on some math test or something and it, it kind of gives you a, a spur to, you know, improve or something. I mean, that's sort of the psychological pattern, maybe, from all the years of public school education to, you know, maybe I'm reacting that way here the same way. Oh, my God. My goodness, what a frustrating experience. So I guess the message here is don't, don't be like me. Have patience. Be cautious. I think to me it's like you have to know the size of what you're getting into. I thought it was, I thought I should be able to get this done in an afternoon and, a, and an evening and maybe like a late night. It ought to happen. And I'm very impatient and determined. And the slower it went, I just got more irritable and more wanting it to be over. And really, I think it would be helpful if someone had told me what you're trying to do. You better give that a couple days and then just put it aside for a couple days and come back and look at your work before you e-file it. And you'll be fine. But you better be patient and better do it that way. And, oh, uh, I... 
I, I psychologically probably that would have helped me. So I guess that's why I'm putting it out in a video. If there are weird people like me that are insistent on using Linux, and they're kind, of, you know, maybe they're kind of cheap like me. I don't know. And for whatever reason, they they pick IRS free fillable forms, and they've never used it before. They don't know what they're getting into. Maybe they think it looks pretty self-explanatory, pretty intuitive, pretty simple. I mean, this terrible user manual. I don't need to use. I don't need to read that. It looks pretty self-explanatory. Let me give it a try. You may have the failure that I did, so now maybe you can avoid avoid my fate. Otherwise, I think tree sheets is kind of fun for making a presentation. It took a long time to prepare this. I mean, I'm a beginner with tree sheets. And I guess a lot of the time was trying to get all these text sizes correct. You know, when you're changing the text size, it behaves not intuitively and kind of weird. And I, again, get kind of frustrated and, and will just sit there trying to make it look just the way I want it to. And I got pretty close. I'm not sure I like this exactly, but... I'm always looking for interesting free and open source software and tree sheets. I like it. I, I find it exciting.